Baker. Welcome to my video tutorial on how to develop dynamics as a jazz drummer or in fact as a musician. All musicians can benefit from being able to execute dynamics with more control, with more musicality on their instrument. So I'm going to look at this area um, through the lens of two big questions. And this will frame all the things that we need in our toolbox to become better musicians, being better able to execute dynamics on the drum kit. So the first question is, why do I as a drummer have to know or learn or practice to develop dynamics on the drum kit? The second question is, what, what do I need to be able to practice to develop the technique, the control, the facility, the ability, the approach and understanding to become better at executing dynamics on the drum kit. So this video is going to be divided into two parts. The first part is a conceptual part and this is very important, might be a little bit boring, but I promise you if you stick with me, go through the things, think about the questions that I'm going to ask you will become a better musician just from that already because you will approach music from a different point of view. So that's the conceptual part. Then the second part we'll go into, into the what. I'll give you a few practical exercises which you can take onto the drum kit and you hopefully can develop a higher level of drum set technique in the area of dynamics. So let's get straight into it dynamics on the drum kit. In the first part of our video, the conceptual part, the first thing that comes up is environment. Now this is an incredibly important thing. Drums by nature are a loud instrument and really in most rooms they sound pretty loud. So you as a musician have to be aware of your instrument and the effect that it has on the environment and what the environment can do to your instrument. So I believe that a series of questions will help you uh, come up with a, a strategy for dealing with different environments. The first question is, where am I playing? This is incredibly important because every single room is different. So in some rooms, drums sound great. In other rooms, drums don't sound so good. In a shiny reflective uh, place like a restaurant where they've got hard tiles, hard brick walls, the drums are loud and they sound a little bit harsh. You could have a practice room that's, that's fully padded and there are lots of soft materials, heavy soft materials, and the drums sound a little bit more muted and you can play hard and feel very comfortable. This is why oftentimes when you practice, you can practice one way and you get comfortable with a particular sound and then when you move into a different environment, it feels completely different and it's actually a challenge to, to feel the things that you could do in the practice room and translate that to a performance situation. So whenever you walk into a room, you want to assess. You want to be like a live sound engineer where you are listening to the room and the effects. You play your drums, you hear what it does in the environment. And then you're going to have to make the suitable changes that will affect your performance and become aware of them and start making mental notes in your mind of how you're going to deal with it. The second question to ask is who am I playing with? This is important. So this is to do with your relationships with other people and how many people are around you in the musical situation. Every person, every musician has different musical expectations. As a drummer it's important to become aware of those and realize what do you bring to the ensemble in terms of volume and energy. So this is going to have an effect on your dynamics. Some musicians want something soft. The other thing is, is it a small group? Is it a duo? Is it a vocal group? Is it an orchestra? Is it a loud banging fusion group? Are the instruments acoustic? Is it amplified? And there's so many variables to that. You could have an amplified band, but the band wants to play at a softer level. So these are adjustments that you will have to make. The third question is, and this affects drummers particularly more than most instrumentalists, and that what drums am I playing on? Because as a drummer, some of the, a lot of the gigs, increasingly so, you find yourself pitching up to a venue and there's a kit there, you not, haven't brought your own, and you have to make adjustments to the sound of the kit 
and what it's going to do in that venue. So that's another question to consider. What instrument are you playing on? Then, once you've uh, addressed all these issues, then it's about finding the balance. So the last thing is finding the balance, like how do I hear myself comfortably? How do I hear the other musicians? How is my drum kit and my playing fitting in with the environment and the musicians, musicians I'm playing with? So this is the area where you could consider that you are self-mixing. You are like an engineer, you're pulling up the faders on your various things. So you're pulling up the faders on your drums and your cymbals and your limbs. And you're making those adjustments to fit the performance situation you're in. So I believe that these areas, if you look into them and become aware of them, you become a better musician, uh, actually a better person because you're considerant of what's happening around you. So go for it. consider your environment, think about you as the drummer and what you bring to that environment. Okay, we're in our second part of the conceptual approach in developing your dynamics. So this part is about the big thing that we are here to do, and that's play the music. So you need to, once again, ask yourself a series of questions which will help you in your dynamic levels as a drummer in the musical situations that you find yourself in. So the first question is, what style or approach is the music that I'm playing? So this is a huge thing because even in jazz, there are many many different styles, approaches and concepts and ways of playing jazz. It's not just one thing. So as a musician, I need to be have a wide array of understanding of what the musical thing, situation will bring. Is the music busy? Is it high energy? Is it intense? It is, is it cool? Uh, is it very arranged in particular? Or can I be very free? And those, all those factors will affect the dynamics that you will play as a drummer. So the more understanding of style, of uh, how musical environments work, and uh, what you have to bring to the table as a drummer, the easier it will be and the easier it will be able to fit in. And then that will start to affect your practicing because you will have to practice the dynamics of a style for for. For instance, if I'm playing bossa nova and Brazilian type of things, I can't sound like a funk drummer where my bass drum is super heavy and I get this fat backbeat. Whereas the in in Brazilian type of music, the the drum set is more is overall there's kind of a blended sound. It's much more like a percussion instrument, so all the sounds are more blended, and you've got to work out the internal dynamics of that. So that applies to a lot of different styles. Every style has a different limb dynamic and uh, levels and your snare and your bass drum so these the more that you practice the more that you listen to music you start to become aware of how to play music with dynamics the next question is what is in my toolbox so in your toolbox is basically the things that you've practiced so the more things that you have in your toolbox to draw from and I would say simple tools as well. How loud can I play? What is my control factor, my balance and sound in my grooves? Like for this groove, I bring this certain balance and relationship between my, my sticks, my feet, the sound of the drums, all those type of things. So those are the technical exercises that you, you practice. And one of the, the, the things is, I think probably most musicians, we tend to play things one way. So in the practice room, you need to consider playing the, your exercises, your tracks, whatever the case may be, with different dynamics and different intensity, because all those will have a different influence on the music that you're playing. So the more that you have in the toolbox, the better equipped you are for different musical situations. And people like to play with you more because you bring more to the table. That's always a good thing. The third question is, what is my bandwidth? Like every, everybody, we have certain tempos. We can play comfortably a certain slow tempo and that will go up to our fastest tempo. And we have a comfortable region. That will be like our bandwidth. And the same approach to, to dynamics. You, you can play certain things softly and feel comfortable, but other things not comfortable. So you have to work out what is your bandwidth. How, how loud can you play? How much energy can you bring? 
how soft can you play and how much energy you can bring. And that brings us to the, the last point, which is energy and intention. So oftentimes on the drums, when you're playing loud, it's quite easy to feel very intense and very energetic because the motions and the volume of what you're playing is conveying that. But if you're playing with a singer and you're playing fast swing, very fast swing, it becomes a challenge to play soft and with a lot of energy as if you were playing loud. Or even a bossa nova, how do you bring like a lot of energy and attention to something that you're holding a brush and a cross stick with uh, your left hand on? How do you make that feel energetic but play softly? So these are important things to consider as well. So how, if you have to play soft, how much energy do you bring to it? And you can work out different strategies to help yourself do that. And uh, people will like it when you're able to bring your energy and intention to what you play, no matter what the situation is. So that wraps up the first part of, our, of this video. And we're going to kick into some practical exercises where you can practice some, some things that will help you in your journey to becoming a better drummer and better able to deal with dynamics on the drum kit. Now we're going to get into some exercises to help you develop your dynamics in your jazz drum set playing. First up, I believe you need to gain control of your drumsticks. You need to be able to play loud and soft strokes with them. So we're going to use a series of exercises to help you develop that. We're going to use accents and taps and combinations of fours, threes and twos. So first up, an accent. Accent is just a loud note for the drumsticks. We're just going to move from a high position, say 90 degrees, to a low position. You want to play from a high position, keep the stick down. Taps would be a soft note and uh, that's going to be low to low. So, fours. Accent, three taps. One, two, three. Threes, accent and two taps. Twos, accent one tap. Once you have those motions down, you can look at improvising. Very important as a jazz musician. To improvise. So we're going to take combinations, fours, threes and twos and mix them up and just play them, bring them up, try create melodies with the accents. To start us off though, I'm going to use a bossa nova clave, I'm going to take that melody, play it as accents and then move out from there. One, two, three, four. Once you've got that down, move it to the drum kit. You want to be able to play it on your toms, your snare drum and hi-hat. Move through those accents, experiment on different levels of loud and soft and uh, have fun with that on the drum kit, creating combinations of fours, threes and twos. You also want to try your bass drum. In jazz, drum set playing, bass drum is very important. You can't just play it at one volume. You need to be able to move through different dynamics. So accenting soft notes, very important. Check it out on the bass drum. Last up on the practice pad, we're going to go from soft to loud strokes, loud to soft strokes. So I'm going to use unison hands to demonstrate bar of 4-4, four, four, playing eighth notes, soft to loud, loud to soft. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Ten. 
one, two, three, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, left hand one. Sixteenths, alternating hands, soft, loud, loud, soft. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We're gonna improvise now. Moving on to our next exercise or approach, we're going to explore different dynamic levels with the hand and foot combination. The pattern will be foot, my right foot, right left. And I'm going to play it in triplets. I'm going to keep a jazz pulse, tie it on the two and four while I do it. And I'm going to explore the whole drum, the whole drum kit, the cymbals, and move up and down in my dynamic levels. This is just one pattern, one combination. You can try many more. There are many more out there and you can be really creative with what you come up with. But to get you going, here we go. One, two, three. third approach looks at dynamic coordination. This is a tricky thing to develop and uh, it was shown to me quite a long time and it was really uh, one of those things that unlocked my playing and helped me go much further in my jazz drumming which was at a particular level which I couldn't play too much and this opened me up so much. So what is dynamic coordination? Dynamic coordination basically refers to I'm keeping a fixed pattern with one or more limbs and then one of my limbs is exploring different dynamic levels in different rhythms against that. So we're going to take a swing ride pattern and we're going to play that as consistently as possible. So no matter what we're doing with the hand that is going to explore the dynamic levels, I can't deviate from that, that motion. So we'll play the swing ride, highs on two and four, very soft uh, bass drum on quarters and for now for the first example I'll just play quarter notes on the snare drum so I'll play at three dynamic levels basically very soft medium loud then I'll play one bar of soft one bar of loud and then we'll do a crescendo decrescendo soft to loud, loud to soft, all the while keeping my right hand as consistent as possible. One, two, one, two, three, Our next pattern, I'll explore the two middle beats of a triplet. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. One, two, one, two, three, four.
Now what I'll do is I'll play some improvised patterns on my left hand and I'm just going to move around with the dynamics. So I'm basically playing, comping ideas, but playing them as dynamically as possible. Remembering to try and keep my right hand as consistent as possible. One, two, one, two, three. So check out that uh, book called Advanced Techniques for the Modern Drummer by Jim Chapman. That's a perfect text to work with. You learn different rhythms with your left hand and don't just play them one way. Explore all the dynamic levels all the while keeping a consistent pattern on your right, your left foot and right. The last foot. approach is to explore different sound levels on top of a groove. So I'm going to take a basic groove and uh, vary the dynamics loud to soft everywhere in between and uh, as well as use the limbs with varying dynamics and just see what happens the intention of this exercise is to exaggerate things however just a note to you in a performance situation i wouldn't vary the dynamics that much once the volume of a song and the group has been established I would stick to the that sort of level, keep it consistent and not too much variation other than the ebbs and flows of the song and some accents that, that need to be taken care of. So keep in mind it's an exercise and you can have fun with it. The groove I'm using is from a tune uh, by Herbie Hancock called Chameleon and the drummer on that was Harvey Mason. Using a metronome and 100 BBM. Thank you for joining me on this video tutorial. I hope you got something out of it, that you learned something, and I hope that your drumming is enriched and is taken to a high level. Thank you.